I'm trying to no, it's a good afternoon. Um this is day 46. Ezekiel 46. So if you have uh many people may have already read 46 or you might have been following me and say, you know, let me check this out. No matter what it is, for me, it's the first time I've ever seen 46 as of yesterday. And I am bringing what I learned today. Father, we thank you for your word. Help us to see the timing so that we will know what's happening in the world. Based on what you said, we are to see through the mouth and understanding of Ezekiel having saw you say these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, what I learned about the details of chapter 46 is that when Isaiah prophesied or the prophets prophesied about the coming of Jesus, um, they gave details. And he gave, they gave step-by-step -step details. I mean, they gave a lot. He told them who his mother would be. They said where he was be where he would be born. Um, and everything about him, everything that every step he made was already written. Well, I can say many steps he made were written before he ever made those steps because he only followed the curriculum of God. And he knew that he had to leave. He said, I got it. He said, I'm going to die. I'm going to give my life and I'm going to get up out of the grave in three days. And he did. Everything he said, it was written. And um, wise men sought to seek him. I wonder why the preachers didn't go after him. I wonder why the world didn't go after him. All those prophets, all those people going to church, all those Pharisees, all those Sadducees, we look at the Pharisees like we are disconnected. But if we are behaving like the Pharisees, we got the same spirit. It's just a different name, same spirit. If we don't know the move of God and why things are the way they are, that means we don't know God's word because there is nothing. He said, he said nothing happened by chance. Everything, there's a reason. And the whole Look of the uh, uh, of the world is shaped based on how the people to handle this book. If we don't know this book, then the world would be as it is. When people seek God, their land is healed. Problems are solved. There's all this debate. I'm not talking, I'm talking about seek God like you seek a job. People that really want to work. But we are still doing walking like Cain in the city of Nod. <sighs> We're not. We're not paying attention to what God say do based on how he said it. That's what Cain didn't do. God gave. He said, I taught you. And in the process, uh, process of time, y'all came back and gave me evidence of my teaching. Adam and Eve didn't teach. God said, I taught them. And in the process, that means a period of time went by. They both brought their fruit to God for his, his uh, inspectation, for him to inspect it. And Abel brought the firstly, or the first one, the first one. And God was pleased. Cain brought an offering. Yeah, it don't really matter. God said, I don't take it like that. I told you to bring me things first. And then he said, you going to do it all this time? I'll just... Mm -mm. So Cain left fourth chapter of Genesis and built his own city, and the name of it was Nod. And the people still don't take the time to do it the way God said. Cain did have brought an offer now. It just was not the way God taught it. It didn't matter what it was. This was did you bring it the way God said? People argue over whether it was uh, meat or grain or something. Look at the way God wrote it. He said, 
the adjective first man. And that's what he expects for us to do. Give me, give me, give me first class. The whole airplane ought to be first class. Not just a section. God said, when I changed the water into wine, he said, I gave the last good wine. So if the first was good, he said the last ought to be good. So you ought to have first class all over that plane. But no, we section people off. And Jesus said, when I get here, I'm cutting the mess up. I got to run the earth before you see the fall. I'm going to make it easy on you. But you know, listen, I, my word is easy, but I'm going to bring my rod. I'm going to cut this mess out. I'm going to make sure that what I said is implemented the way I said. And I have somebody, you're going to have to wonder, is it me? He's going to be so much into my word until he's going to sound just like me. And that's where we're getting ready to go today. Because <laughs> I really thought it was him, but let's just read to see who was it. But whoever it was, God used that person. All right, Ezekiel 46. Let's see what it is that God is going to do. So when it happens, we can recognize it. Ezekiel telling us now that God is going to make a move. And this is how it's going to be done. Thus says the Lord God, the gateway of the inner court that faces toward the east shall be shut the six working days. For six days while you at work, the, the east, east gate going to be uh, shut. But on the Sabbath, it shall be opened. And on the day of the new moon, it shall be opened. He said it's going to be open on the Sabbath. And some people thought that the Sabbath day was a day that did, they didn't do anything. Yeah, they still worshiped. They still brought offerings. They still did the things that God required. They just didn't go to work and get paid some money for what they were doing. The ground was not giving yield of the fruit because it had everything. Everything, you couldn't do nothing to the ground. But what was already done, when God wanted an offering, that offering had to be given by Moses that he gave morning and evening. Seventh day, it was everything. So we have to learn what was God speaking of. Was he just saying everybody go to sleep? Or I just don't want you to think about your income on this day and just come in to me. And let's just do things like just you and me. That's just me and you. Kick it. So, uh, but on that new moon, now what is the new moon? That's that celebration time. There was no crying. What else was there not? There was not any crying. There was no sadness. There was it, was, it was something about that day. They just, whatever your problem was, not on the new moon. Girl, don't bring that up today. Not the new moon. This is God's time. Celebrating time. No sadness. No, nobody, everybody rejoicing. Every, whatever problem you had, girl, I don't care. We don't talk about that today. And that's how God just like, I, God, I like to have a good time. He said, the prince shall enter by way of the vestibule or the, or the foyer of the gateway from the outside and stand by the gate post. He said, I'll tell you exactly how you're going to move. I told you Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem and where he will be found. And when the wise guys, not the preachers, there's some, just a, there's a group of wise men. They said they might. Somebody said they were kings. Uh, all I know is there was only a few of them. They looked at the word and said, you know, they won't be born by now. And they went after the word. Quote, after the word. So this, he said, I'm telling you what's going to happen because I need, I'm giving you all a copy, the wise people, a copy of what's going to happen. So when it happens, you can attach this word from Ezekiel to what's going to happen. And you said, that's the word of God. The prince shall enter by the way of the vestibule of the gateway from the outside. He's not, and stand by the gate post. I'll tell you exactly what you're going to stand. Standing. When Jesus got ready to, um, to have that last supper, I believe, he told those disciples, he said, go over into that city and straight where you shall find a coat and an ass tied. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if anybody asks you what's up, and they said, you tell them I got need of All of that all of that was already in the word. And Jesus said that coat going to be standing right there. And they went over there 
and did exactly what Jesus said because it was time. The prince shall enter by the will of the vestibule, the gateway from the outside, and stand by the gatepost. I'm giving you, I'm giving you details so you can't miss it. The priest shall prepare his burnt offering. Prepare his burnt offering to who? The prince. The priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings. He shall worship at the threshold of the gate. So right there at the entrance, the, uh, the prince is going to worship. The leader is going to worship. Then he shall go out, but the gate shall not be shut until evening. He says he's going out. He, whatever time he leaves, the gate won't be shut until the appointed time. Then he said, likewise, the people of the land shall do the same as the leader, shall worship at the entrance of this gate before the Lord on the Sabbaths and on the new moons. So God said, this is going to happen and it's going to be very orderly. So just check. The leader is going to worship at the threshold of the gate and the people are going to do the same on those days, the Sabbaths and the new moons. When is this going to happen? Ezekiel is prophesying that it is going to happen in the future. Well, we don't do uh, all of those days again. That's what we thought. But according to Ezekiel, God is going to make that move again. Now, I got some idea what I think, but I might have put it on hold. I got some really strong ideas, but I got to wait. I'm going to wait. If it's of God, then we'll see. But right now, I'm just going to be just like, just listen to what he said. Why is he doing it like this? To get our attention to read, because we ran and said that all of this had been done away with God. said, no, they didn't read. They're not reading. So they need to go back and check because this has got to come. This is, this is future. The burnt offerings that the prince offers to the Lord on the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without defects and a ram without defects. Can't be nothing wrong with it. Just like us. Know the word without defects. Now, you don't go in the words, skipping around. And, uh, mm -mm. Don't do that. And the grain offering shall be one effort for a ram. He said, I'm giving you details. And the grain offering for the lamb, as much as he wants. He said, now, for the ram, it's got to be measured. But for the lambs, he said, it could be as, whatever he wants, whatever grain he wants to bring with it, whatever side dish he wants to bring. As much as he wants to give, as well as a hen of oil with even with every effort. Effort? I guess that's the container of measurement. He said, now I'm giving you the way things, the order. I'm very orderly, so I got to give it in details. So he said, the reason why I'm doing it exactly the way it's going to be done, so when it's done exactly that way, you know what I said. So remember what I'm saying in Ezekiel 46. On the day of the new moon, it shall be a young bull without blemish. Now, on the other day, what day was it? On the Sabbath, let me see. The burnt offering on the prince. On the Sabbath, it was different. On the day of the new moon, it shall be a young bull. And on the Sabbath, it was a ram without blemish. So you got to pay attention to these details. Six lambs and a ram. They shall be without defect or blemish. So I got two days I want y'all to do the same thing, but it'll be different um, uh, uh, offerings. And just watch what I'm saying. On the Sabbath, which will be every seven days, it's going to be this way, but every new moon when it's time to come together as a group of people all together, it's going to be, check out the difference. He shall prepare a grain offering of, of an effort for a bull and an effort for a ram as much as he wants to give for the lambs and a hen of oil with every effort. So whatever, every measurement, I, I'll just say measurement, with, with every cup or however, every bushel, 
He said he's going to prepare that. So in other words, God said the menu is going to be uh, steak. This is me talking when I use that. And a salad. So I'm just trying to make it come off the page. But whatever it is, he says it's going to be just like I said. And I'm talking about future days. After whatever day that this happened, he's going to look just like this. When the prince enters, who is this prince? Let's keep talking. He shall go in by way of the vestibule, come into the foyer. He said, now when he comes in of the gateway, he shall come in by the gateway and go out the same way. He said, I'm telling you, when he comes in, whatever door he comes in, that's the door he's going to go out. But when the people of the land come before the Lord on the appointed feast days, whoever enters by the north gate to worship shall go out by the south gate. So you come in by the north, he said, I'm going to need you to exit by the south. If you Okay, then he said, uh, he said, but when the people of the land come before the Lord on the appointed feast days, whoever enters by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate. And whoever enters by the way of the south shall go out by the north gate. He says it's going to be very organized. How you get here? You came in through the north gate, go in through the south. He shall not return by the way of the gate through which he came, but shall go out through the opposite gate. The prince shall then be in their midst. So the prince will make sure, okay, I see y'all. He'll be in there when they go in, and he shall go in. And when they go out, he shall go out. It's almost like a man opening the door. When you go in, he comes after you. And when you get ready to get out, he goes behind you. And you just make it just look like a beautiful city. The prince shall then be in the midst. Okay, I read that. Okay, verse 11. At the festival and the appointed feast day, the grain offering shall be an ephah. He says, so we're talking about the big day now. For a bull and an ephah for a ram, as much as he wants to give for the lambs. And a hen of oil with every ephah, or every bushel, every container. Now when the prince makes a voluntary burnt offering or voluntary peace offering to the Lord, if he just decides I want to give the Lord something, the gate that faces toward the east shall be open for him. And he shall, he said, I'm going here to prepare an offering. His, and he shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offering as he did on the Sabbath day. So God has said, whatever he's going to do on his own, he still has to have an order, even if he volunteers to do it. Then he shall go out, and after he goes out, the gate shall be shut. He said, if I decide to do something volunteer." voluntarily for God, then I have to do it in order. Even if I volunteer, I still got to do it in order. If I'm appointed, then I have to follow God's word. Or if I volunteer to do something for God, he says, still, you got to follow my word. You shall daily make a burnt offering to the Lord of a lamb. Now, he said, now, I got those dates, days set aside that must be done that way. But let me tell you what you got to do every day. You shall daily make a burnt offering to the Lord of a lamb. And the first year without blemish, you shall prepare it every morning. God said every day you got to get up and uh, do whatever, make an offering to me. In a way, the only way I can tell you right now is every day get come and do the same thing. Every day get up and get in the word and let's, uh, you shall daily make a burnt offering to the Lord of a lamb of the first year without blemish. You shall, you shall prepare it every morning. I take this based on what I do myself and what I understand and what will happen. God will explain. But every morning, I want to get in the word seriously and make sure that I'm not making mistakes in what I'm reading. And if I make a mistake, I want to make sure that I correct. Get in the word every single day and then make your moves according to what the word has given you to do every day. 
and you shall prepare a grain offering with it every morning. It's six of an elephant. I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to tell you how to organize things. I want you to be organized. And a third of hen of oil to moisten the fine flour. Then grain offering is a perpetual ordinance to be made regularly to the Lord. So whatever God is saying to offer to me, he said, check the recipe in, in, in verse 13 and 14 of chapter 46. This is going to happen. What God is going to do, if need be to explain about this future um, plan of God, how did we get back to bringing burnt offerings? We got to check the word because we ran off and got the New Testament and did away with all the offering. God said, so that's why I know you didn't read. Because Ezekiel is talking about them same offering, not the exact same offerings that uh, Moses did, but pretty much. But the only thing that we can do is say, God is going to bring up the offerings that he told Moses um, to do before Jesus came. But because we didn't read the word, we left out this whole assignment by God said what is to come. And we won't even recognize it when it comes because we didn't know what he said in his word. So if anybody is teaching that the, the offerings are over, then tell them I said go back and read the last eight, nine, chap nine chapters of Ezekiel. God woke it back up. And this is to come. Now I got a, I thought about it. I got, I believe I got a clear understanding of what I know and believe how God is going to make this relate. But I can't say anything right now because this is a verse going, this is a verse that checked me. And I got to make sure that um, I don't overlook something that I know is written based on what I was thinking. So anyway, all I can say is he is bringing these offerings up again. Good morning, Miss Brenda. <laughs> All right, so um, we just got to stick with the word. We can't be like, now I put up a post and I said this earlier, Latrice. Why, Latrice, let me ask you this. Why was it? And I won't, I won't be able to read everything that you're saying. When I read about the wise men who went to seek after Jesus because they were checking the word, they were in the word of God and they went after uh, to see whether the word according to what they saw in the word, they, they saw that star and they went after it and they found Jesus just where the word said he should be. I said, how come the preachers didn't go? I know they said it was more than three, may have been three, I don't know. And they brought gifts. They didn't go empty hand. Why, why, how, come the, how come the whole world didn't go? That's sad. That he gave instructions written by God, said it's going to happen, which was true. And it did happen, but only a few showed up to go see. Because that king couldn't do, do, couldn't do anything if the whole nation had to say, we're going after Jesus. But when he when he found out that those wise guys was going, he said, I heard y'all going to see you. Baby, let me know when you find him. But he wasn't up to no good. But what if the whole world went to see him? The king would have been diminished. Just like today, we, too, we, we, we still not reading God's word. But anyway, that ain't no happy song. I thought about it this morning. It's time to really go seek the word so when, when God get ready to make a move, we're not blind, that we are not blind to what's happening. All right. He said, verse, verse 14, and you shall prepare a grain offering with it every morning. So you got to get up. You got something to do. Every morning, God said, I'm giving you your assignment. And I'm going to verse 15. Thus they shall prepare the lamb, the grain offering, and the oil as a regular burnt offering every morning. Some kind of way God has given instruction about these offerings. And I think it's going to be more than just reading the word. It's going to be some tangible things that God is going to explain that must be done. Because they knew about it. When Ezekiel took these notes and took it back to the people, they, were, they knew what he was talking about. But because we've been taught that the offerings that God asked Moses to do has been done away with. We lost sight of what God talking about. And God is saying, it's going to be more than just talk. It's got to be something that we got to learn. What did God want really after these offerings? Not so much as 
Um, I know Jesus came in and he became the supreme sacrifice. But some kind of way, there is something that we must do every morning. And it may, I'm not sure yet, because I got to go unlearn. Because I never seen God say that these offerings are going to be in the future. Until I read the book of Ezekiel. So I'm just going to take my time. And then I'll let you know as soon as I know. But other than that, I'm going to stay in the Word every morning. And then I got to bring something. It's something that I must do that lines up with satisfying what will happen. Because God said, I'm giving you detail. This is going to happen every every new moon and every seven days. He said, I'm bringing them orders back in line. But you thought I was playing? You thought Jesus came? Jesus said, I told you I ain't coming to destroy that. He said, I told you I ain't coming to destroy that. But we thought, well, you know, now we can do anything we want. Jesus said, you're alive. We just didn't seek him long enough to say, what is it that he really came to do? And then he said, the really thing that I came to do is tell y'all to treat each other right with the, with the offering that you got. Anyway, I believe that, that part right there. I just know that when he said, I didn't come to get rid of what Moses did. And now he's proven it. Thus says the Lord God, if the prince gives a gift of, and this is what got me, because I got my idea, I thought I had that thing down pat, but this verse checked me and said, okay, shh, not yet. If it's not right, you ain't going to never speak it, but if you get it right, you got to keep reading. Thus says the Lord God, and it's good too. <laughs> if the prince gives a gift of some of his inheritance, in other words, he, he passed down his property, to any of his sons, it shall belong to his sons. It is their possession by inheritance. So he said, if this leader gives a gift to his sons, then it's his son's gift. He said, but if he give, if this same prince, the leader, that looks so much like Jesus, it got confusing to me. But if he gives a gift of some of his inheritance to one of his servants, it shall be his until the year of liberty or the day of Pentecost, that after it, or is the day of Pentecost? Let me make sure. I know it's the day of Jubilee. That's what it is. Day of Jubilee. That's when every debt was paid off. But if he gives a gift to some of his inheritance, one of his servants, it shall be his until the year of Jubilee, after which it shall return to the prince. In other words, you could ride in this car. I'm the prince until uh, I think 50 years the, the year of Jubilee and then every debt was paid off so you gotta give me my car back or whatever it is that you, I let you have or give me my house back it's no longer in your name but his inheritance shall belong to his sons if he shall become there so if the prince gave the son a house he said that's his son's house but if that same prince gave his servant uh, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Um, a house he had to give it, he can only live in there. He like, he like renting. I'm just saying. Hey, even yours. He yours for those years, but not, not forever. Moreover, the prince shall not take any of the people's inheritance. He said, you're going out there bullying them people and evicting them. By evicting them from their property, he shall provide an inheritance for his sons from his own property so that none of my people may be scattered from his property. So God is saying, basically, the lesson to learn here is even the prince, the leader has to follow instructions and do it just like God said. The prince ain't just coming up nothing in his head. He actually just carrying out the word of God. Verse 19. Now he brought me through the entrance. So Ezekiel still following this man. Are we still following Jesus? Or did we just stop and say, I like this part right here. No, keep moving. Now he brought me through the entrance, which was at the side of the gate, going into another part of the word, into the holy chamber of the priest, which faced toward the north. So Ezekiel get a good glimpse of everybody's position. Because he got to go back and teach this. And then he wrote it down so us, we can see it. And there's, and when he came, he brought me into the holy chambers of the priest, which faced toward the north. And there a place was situated at the extreme western end. 
He said, I saw something coming in. I came in at the, he said, and he brought me into the entrance, into the holy chambers, in the holy rooms of the priest. He took me in there where the priest is, so you can know what the pastor is doing, which faced toward the north. He said he was faced toward the north, and there was a place situated at the extreme western end, so he could see around that place. And he said to me, this is the place where the priest shall boil the trespass offering and the sin offering. So he brought them into the kitchen. <laughs> and where they shall bake the grain offering so that they do not bring them out into the outer court to sanctify the people. He said, they got a special place where they had them big old hot pots. And they wasn't bringing it through the area where the people were. The God knew that to burn them people. So I got, a, I got a place where I need the priest to be in there cooking. Because you can't bring it through the area where the people line it up to go in north and south. Get them. He said, no, you just, just come in the way I said. Just keep it sanctified. Keep it right. Keep it straight. Keep it holy. Because when it came out of God's mouth, it was clear what he wanted done. And that makes it sanctified. Then he brought me out into, so, okay, you see what, see, God is showing Ezekiel every part of his place. He said, I'm letting you know everything I'm doing. Like I told you in the beginning, on the first day I did this, on the second day I did this, on the third day I did this. He said, I want you to know what I'm doing. Jesus said, I gave you a copy of my whereabouts. I had to climb a mountain just to get away from y'all because y'all knew and were following me, but you were only following me for, for blessings like people do today. I just want the Lord to bless me. He said, that's what the people did when I came down. He said, I couldn't even have to talk to them folks. And nothing but parables because they weren't ready to get the word the word right because they, all they wanted was some stuff. They wanted to see me do some two fish and five loaves. He said, I ain't going to do that. Came to show you how to fish and I own the sea. Well, not own it, but please go out there and I help people. Let me help you get some fish. You bring up as many as you want. As much as you work for. Then he brought me out into the, he went, took him to the kitchen of the priest. Then he brought me out of there into the outer court and caused me to pass by the four corners of the court. Because Ezekiel was just looking around. Four corners. He looked that way, that way, that way. <laughs> then he brought me out into the outer court and caused me to pass by the four corners of the court. And in fact, in every corner of the court, there was another court. He said, it was so much to do. I looked. It, it, it just looked like it was just, oh, it's another court. In the four corners of the court were enclosed courts, 40 cubits long and 30 wide. This guy was really taking notes. And that's another thing. God said, Do you, is your house in order where you know everything is brundle? <laughs> this guy, Ezekiel was paying so much attention. Let me, let, me, let me tell you why I believe Ezekiel could pick up on all this stuff. He said it was 30, because they got the right guy, 40 uh, cubits long and 30 uh, cubits wide. All four corners were the same size. Black people got it right. Black, oh, what, what, Chinese, oh, what, 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 all of <laughs> Why did God use Ezekiel? And how was Ezekiel able to retain all of them? Because he stayed before God. And when you stay before God, your, your territory of your mental capacity is enlarged. There was a row of building stones all around in them. He was like, this thing is organized. All around the four of them. And cooking pots of hurts like a, like a fireplace were made under the rows of stones all around. I wasn't just giving these even stuff to say, oh, ain't that easy? This ain't no museum. This is where people really go to work. He looked over there, he went and kicked the priest of the, the kitchen of the priest, and then he came back there and he said, they still got it. What he said? Uh, cooking places were made under the rolls of stones all around. God said, now when I tell you to fix me something to eat or fix something to eat every morning, I'm going to provide it for you to do it. And he said to me, these are the kitchens where the ministers of the temple shall boil the sacrifice of the people. So I got the priests, they got a special room. And then I got um 
the ministers, the the the, the, uh, the who's them guy, the Zodax or the Levites, the people that's that gonna be cooking a lot, and they just enjoying themselves. I bet it was smelling good up in there, and he's uh, cooking it for the people. In other words, everybody connected to God's word ought to be doing their part, and it ought to be something that the people can taste. That everything ought to be. God was about feast. Anytime anybody said, bring me a bull and a ram and a lamb, God's like, I like a good meal. I want you to get yourself right because these meals represent something. And what you could afford, bring it and watch us feast together. I can't imagine all that God is going to complete in that. In Ezekiel, I got two more chapters. And if the Lord let me live, I would have completed 1,000. 189 days of sitting in this word day and night. I was determined when I retired May 24, 2019. I said, Lord, people ain't reading the word. I'm going to read it for them. I didn't know that he was saying, you're going to read it for yourself. <laughs> sometimes people ain't going to be listening, and sometimes I'm just going to show you. But if you want to share with the world, by all means, do it. It would be three years. Today makes three years, three months, and one day that God has allowed me to breathe and read. And I can actually say that this book is easy. I'm not intimidated. I, I learn. I don't know what all God is going to do through. Am I done? No. I just learned how to read it. That's just the foundation. Now I got to build. I got to go back in here and whatever he tells me to do, whether it just be for children, whatever it is, I'm delighted because I know how to do it. I know where these scriptures are found. I know when people talk, I can hear. I said, wait a minute, hold up, I can read that. Because I read, I read this chapter, I may have read this chapter at least, if not 10 times, at least 10. Well, I read it a lot. Because as soon as I get off this video, I'm finna jump in 47. Then I got today, and then tomorrow, it would be three years, three months, and three days that I sat just like Mary. And people would just like Mom, you need to get up. You need to go somewhere. I did go somewhere. I didn't know I was in class. And I took it just like I was going to college. But I find out what the word really said. And I had no idea that God had a plan after Jesus to bring back some of the things that he told Moses to do. We got to do it again. I have no idea what God is doing in that, but I do know this much. And I always listen to other preachers. I never come on here by myself. I study, I sit in a class of teachers, and they too say, we don't really know what God is saying. And it might have been just like when Jesus told them, that temple said in three days it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, fall down or that temple going down, but it's gonna, I'm going to get back up in three days. You can build this temple, but you can destroy this temple, but in three days I'm getting up. And they know what Jesus was talking about. But when he did it, at least, at least they knew he spoke it and it made sense. So if I'm in an area where I don't know what he's doing, at least I know he said it. So when he does it, I say he did it. Read. And nobody can ever tell me that the laws of Moses are done away with. Because in Malachi 4, he said, do not teach those people that the laws that I gave Moses on Mount Sinai is gone away with. And we do it every day. And, and then in this particular time, it's so easy. Like I read yesterday, Jesus said, if you got 200 lambs, give me you got 200? You got, I, I say you got 200 because you might have a thousand, but if you got, got 200 though, he said, give me one. You, got, you ain't got but 199. Don't worry about it. That's in the word of God. But we fighting over tithes. And Jesus said, I told y'all, y'all don't read this word. Why is the preachers don't know this? Because they are, many of them have no clue and don't even seek. Like Jesus said, you don't read and neither do you tell the people to, to do it because Right here, this guy, or this, I thought this was Jesus because he was so perfect in his mood. 
But God said, I got people that moving, like I said. It ain't so much like Jesus, just like uh, 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 Boaz. I had to read Ruth again. I thought that was God talking. That was Boaz talking. Because he sounded just like God, which is, I wish I could find a man that sound just like God. With the heart of God, that He's I don't, I'll tell you how I know a man is good when he treats people right. That's a good man. But um, uh, all I can say is, He gave us something to look forward to. He said, "I'm gonna have a party." He said, "You gonna, if you got two hundred lamb, give me one." And guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put it in the freezer, and then I'm gonna wait, and we'll have a party, and we'll get it back. That's the word of God. We got to read, y'all.